Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? We're going to go ahead and start our council meeting. We're going to ask Minister Rosalind Chipman from Sacred St. John to come to the mic and give us your prayer. And we're going to ask you to remain standing for Ms. Patricia Lane to give us our Pledge of Allegiance. Good afternoon. May we out, Brown? Father God, we right, right now we come repenting of everything that we've done that was not according to your word. Hallowed be thy name, O oh God. God, I pray for the council members right now so they can make decisions, the right decision. It deliberates on each item. God, may your word stand right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, as they go forward, Lord, just give them the wisdom and, God, and guidance for every decision. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Would you all face the flags? Repeat with me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Ms. Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mayor McClendon. Present. City Attorney Stevenson. Here. City Treasurer Souter, Jr. Thank you. Councilor Bruce. Here. Councilor Catt. Here. Councilor Kroon. Here. Councilor Harris. Here. Councilor Holt. Here. Councilor Hutchinson. Here. Councilor Muhammad. Present. Councilor Monday. Here. Councilor Murray. Here. Councilor Wheelies. Here. 10 out of 10. We have 10 out of 10 present. That's a quorum. Uh, we had no bid openings. Um, or any corrections to the minutes? Make motion to approve the submitted. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Those minutes are approved. We had no old business. Uh, so, Ms. Muhammad, will you do me the honor of this R1? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion that <coughs> R1 be read by title only. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's passed. <coughs> City Attorney? R1 is a resolution authorizing the City of West Memphis to enter into a consent administrative order with the Arkansas Department of Energy and Environment Division of Environmental Quality, DEQ. All right. Uh, having, having, that, having that here, can I get a motion and a second to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? No. All right. Uh, Bob, are you there or are you not? Here you go. Oh. Here can you just skip yeah, a... Yeah. For transparency for the public, can you just give just a quick synopsis of what we're doing? Yes, so the, the purpose of this resolution is to allow the mayor to sign an amended consent order with the Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality. The reason we need an amended consent order is ADQ conducted a records review in advance of an EPA audit and discovered that there were unauthorized discharges that were not covered under the original consent order. So in order for the city of West Memphis and <coughs> West Memphis Utilities not to be liable for any of those additional or those unauthorized discharges until we complete construction on the wastewater plant, we need to amend the consent order. All right, thank you. Uh, that's just an uh, explanation of why we're doing this. I just wanted, once again, in my efforts to be more transparent to the, the community, understand what we are doing. Um, there were no other questions, so Mr. Eclair, will you call the roll? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Councilor Bruce? Yes. Councilor Katz? Yes. Councilor Kroon? Yes. Thank you, sir. Councilor Harris? Yes. Councilor Holt? Yes. Councilor Hutchinson? Yes. Councilor Muhammad? Yes. Councilor Monday? Yes. Councilor Murray? Yes. Councilor Willis? Yes. 10 out of 10. It was 10 out of 10. Uh, it passes. Would you get that resolution the number? That will be resolution 2673. November. 26. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm out of practice. Sorry. <laughs> 2300. 2300. Zero, zero. Zero. All right. It passes. Mr. Atkins, you be safe. All right. Thank you very much, City Council. All right. No problem. All right. We're going to move down to uh, permission request. Permission for the mayor 
to sign a memorandum of agreement, an MOA, between the city of Memphis, Tennessee, the city of West Memphis, Arkansas, the city of Milliton, Tennessee, the town of Collierville, Tennessee, the city of Bartlett, Tennessee, and the town of Arlington, Tennessee, for the Mid-South Rapid Retrofit Project addressing barriers to residential energy efficiency in the greater Memphis. I'm just going to ask uh, Director Bowman, just give a quick synopsis once again for the public to know. Good afternoon. Uh, the Rapid Retrofit Program is basically a weatherization program that's being extended to all the municipalities that are surrounding the greater Memphis area is being led by Shelby County's Office of Sustainability. And the, the reason we were invited to participate and come to the table is because we affect the attainment of the air quality uh, requirements for the city of Memphis in that area. And as many of you know, statistically, we are lumped in with the Memphis MSA anyway. So all of these participating jurisdictions are a part of the MSA. We are relatively close and we share a lot of the transportation uh, area with Memphis and Shelby County. So we have an opportunity, we have an opportunity to go after funding that will support the entire area where we can do a retrofit program to weatherize homes to make them more energy efficient to reduce the carbon footprint of those households as well as save money for those individual households. And some of the retrofits will include and may include windows, insulation, floor insulation, air sealing, and those sort of things. So this is a great opportunity for West Memphis, and hopefully we'll get this funding at some level to be able to help out the citizens of West Memphis. Thank you, Mr. Bowman. Uh, did anyone have any uh, questions or uh, questions <coughs> about this? We talked about it a little in pre-council. I just wanted for the sake of transparency for the public, we'll be able to that I hear what it was about and asking the question. Uh, so I'm going to ask this time, not hearing any questions. Can you call the roll on that? Mayor, if I may, uh, make a motion to approve as read, subject, subject. to a, a couple of changes city attorney needs to make. Can I get a second on Council? Second. Kent? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we're just going to read uh, subject to the city council. Uh, uh, yeah, his corrections before. He, All right. Yes, sir. Councillor Bruce. Yes. Councillor Cat. Yes. Councillor Croom. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Councillor Holt. Yes. Councillor Hutchinson. Yes. Councillor Muhammad. Yes. Councillor Monday. Yes. Councillor Murray. Yes. Councillor Willis. Yes. We got 10 out of 10 on that, so it is approved. We're going to go down to the committee reports. Uh, we're going to start with police. Yes, sir. Police met last Monday. Uh, the department gave us an update on some equipment issues uh, that they'll be looking to purchase. It totals around $234,000, $235,000. They're looking at, you know, through their budget now to uh, come up with those funds. If not, we'll be asking Ms. Perry if we can look at the capital outlay account and see how close we are. Ten of the radios are out being tested now. They're in the patrol cars. Officers are using them. Should be finished by August 1st with the testing. Determine what type of program adjustments need to be made. That will be turned over to the supplier. Should have all the radios in the officer's hands by August 1st. Uh, the 911 system should be in, in total uh, conversion and, and operational by maybe 11-1 at the end of the year at the worst. And those were the three main points that we discussed at the meeting. That concludes your, that concludes your main minutes? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, public works. Did we, public works? Oh. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, I've got it. All right. Public works committee met 6422024. We approved. Uh, Reports fleet, fleet report, front end loaders four op, operational, none down, rear end loaders two operational, zero down, one arm bandits three, none down, grapple trucks four optional, none down, 
public and before I go any further let me let me take care of this we need another uh, grapple truck and we need another rear loader that we can uh, find you know lease them out and save the money but they say that's all they like having the public works up to, up to really uh, they, they all said it would be a great time, thing to have it in that good a shape so we had public works director report recycle total was 9,800 pounds, tires 580 pounds, garbage trash dumped 1,727 tons, carts one, one purchase, carts three stolen replaced with, with police report. And that's the end of my report. It was very small, but a lot of good things going on. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to move to utility. Okay. Uh, at the last meeting, it was announced that a safety director job would be posted at the utility. Uh, so we also discussed customers will be charged for water meters, whether they use water or not, per policy. Uh, another issue, customer information systems. Utilities will be coming up with a new system. You, you'll be able to pay and do customer service problems. If you have customer service problems, you'll be able to do that online. Uh, you will probably be able to pay bills at Big Star, Walgreens, and or Walmart. They also discussed a customer wreck at the drive through window. Uh, the individual, uh, while sitting in there waiting to pass, uh, waiting to pay his bill, I guess, uh, hit his gas and basically uh, ran over the, uh, while sitting at the, at the window, he hit his, his car went and came out of park, but he was hurt pretty bad and he ended up passing. Also, this, there will be a scholarship fund, interest fund, which is where the interest fund comes out of interest fund, is where money will come from. The steering committee will, be, will write up the policy. Uh, the steering committee will consist of Tory, Mr. Holmes, myself, and the general manager. And basically, what they will do is provide scholarships for students here in West Memphis that are going to school, not just uh, academic, but uh, skills, schools as well. Uh, there will be $50,000 a year that, uh, they would, that they would take out. And there will be different components in it, community service, grades, and needs. The motion was moved for this and it passed. And the city will be hiring students to paint fire hydrants this summer as well. Thank you. <coughs> Councilor Bruce, <clears throat> I may not have understood you correctly and um, expound on it, please. Okay. You said even if the customers are not using water, they will still be charged for a water meter? Y yes, this is uh, based on, I guess these are some, some of the large companies. Oh, okay. Not citizens, I see, but I companies okay. that, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. like for during ir irrigation time, when they're, they're not using, but they'll still be charged for I that understand. equipment. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Yes. Bruce, mm -hmm. uh, Anybody, any resident that has a water meter for irrigation of their yard mm -hmm. is now being charged a, a meter fee, which they hadn't been in the past. Okay. It's like 19 bucks. Well, let me, let me add this. Um, I did talk with Bob about that. And what Bob is doing is following the ordinance. That's right. And if the city council felt that that's something they wanted to change or address, then that you all, but right now he's, he's following he, what the ordinance said to do. Yes, sir. I, I, t I spoke to Bob, and he did. Mayor, I'm still on here. You okay. Like to talk about sure, that. sure. Go ahead. Yeah, so the the reason for the, so when a, when a resident, a utility customer has a water meter, so the AMI meters are significantly more expensive, and the utility is required to maintain, purchase, maintain, and provide service. So where it's an issue is on the irrigation meters. So customers have separate, ir separate meters for irrigation, and the benefit for that is, is when they have an irrigation system and they have a, and it's metered separately, they do not have to pay the sewer charge on irrigation. So that is how that is the benefit for them having a separate meter on irrigation. But even when they don't have any usage, the ordinance is very clear that there is a water meter charge 
And so we are just enforcing the city ordinance at this point. That's the only change that we've been, that we've undertaken. Bob, did we ever explore any idea of why we haven't been charging that fee? I, I've asked that question multiple times and it's not in any regulation with the utility. Uh, the utility commission did not approve that as far as I can tell. I haven't, but uh, my position was is we need to follow the ordinance. That was, uh, that's, that's the law of the city and we're going to follow that. Agreed. Any other questions? Okay, I need to have something approved. So when it comes to the scholarship funds, we're opening up a different, uh, a separate bank account for that. So in order for me to do that, I need it reflected in the minutes that I'm able to open up a bank account for the uh, West Memphis Utility Scholarship Fund, and that me, <coughs> uh, Tori Perry, Charlie Souter, and Tracy Cat are the authorized signatures on that account. So I just need that up in the minutes and approved by you all for us to open that account. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, aye. Okay. Ho, ho, ho. Oops. Was there any discussion to that? As far as the scholarship fund, I know this may not be right on what you're talking about, but where would that money, those, that money come from? You go. Yeah, so we have, the utility has um, restricted and unrestricted CDs. And so as it sits at the bank, it, it, it incurs <laughs> interest. And so what we're doing is we're utilizing that interest income and just moving it from interest income to the scholarship fund. So it's not anything that the citizens are directly paying for. It's just right. something that's just generating at the bank. I think it's a wonderful idea. I agree greatly. Were there any other questions? <coughs> Mayor, can I, can I make a comment? It may go back to public works, uh, and it may go to, I know it's Ms. Patricia, our city clerk, uh, but during the pub public works meeting, uh, there was a concern about uh, businesses being run out of their homes, especially lawn care and tree trimming. And we don't know if they have a... Uh, we don't, I mean, we don't know as a council people if those people have a privileged license to do business out of their homes. The second thing is, is we, we're noticing, at least we have been noticing, that they bring stuff home from their job and they put it on the curb and the city picks it up. And they only, they don't get charged for any kind of commercial, they just get charged for their routine residential pickup. So I, I just threw that out there for a concern. Were you having addresses? Uh, yes. Could you get them? I'll give them to you. I'll give them to Miss uh, Patricia. Thank you. And that's the last one that was approved by the city council for them to operate out of a house. So I think that stopped it at that time. Okay. Well, they're going on now. There's at least two in Ward 3. Well, let me do this real quick. Uh, we got a motion and a second to approve uh, Ms. Perry's uh, mm -hmm. motion. All in favor, aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed? Then you go get the uh, the bank account with the uh, city treasurer where it's uh, Councilman Cat on there. Ms. Patricia, can you put in the minutes that it's going to be at Fidelity Bank? I forgot to say that. Okay, thank you. All right. Were there any other committees or any other reports that need to have been came up today? <coughs> okay, I'm going to move down to announcements. Uh, I'm going to try to be very quick. Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I hope we're not getting involved with this uh, lawn care service uh, where I have somebody come to my house and mow my yard, and we're going to have to charge them. A they have to pay a privilege license and do that? Or just? Well, 
But do you realize there's probably over two or three hundred people doing this? <laughs> I'm just telling you. I mean, how many people are gonna go in? She sure will. I just want to address the fact that together. Okay. The the Planning and Development Code Enforcement Department and the clerk's office have been working cohesively together to identify anybody that is out on the streets cutting a property without a privilege license. When they identify them, they bring they escort them into the office and they are required to have a privilege license, a bond, a surety bond made payable to the city in case there's any damages, and we make sure they're licensed. So if you see somebody, you have a name on a truck, just call the clerk's office and we will work with Mr. Uh, Bowman's office and get it corrected as best we can. All right, thank you. Um, let me go down to announcements. Uh, first of all, I want to address, I know in our um, call to action tour, uh, we had some constituents and some council members, elected officials, and one of the issues brought up about um, code enforcement officers. And I'm listening to everything that people are asking. So I did sign a requisition today with uh, Director's Bowman office if we can rather hire a part-time uh, inspector to try, to try to address things like code infractions and different things like that. But they're only going to work it's part-time, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Because Saturday is when a lot of people are doing the work and the legal action. So it's also going to free up the vehicle as well because definitely we don't want someone just rhyme with someone else. We definitely want everyone to be working. So it's going to be a part time to make sure we can address some of them issues that uh, Councilman Hope brought up during the meeting. Mm -hmm. So definitely we will get that taken care of and we're just looking for a qualified person possibly can work on that. Also at that meeting, I want to once again, I want to encourage everyone in the city to start coming out to the meetings and listening to what's going on because I, I hate when it, it comes time for anything you didn't know we ain't, we ain't being transparent. It's really that it may be because you don't like what's going on or you haven't had the opportunity to do the research like we all do. But please come out to the meetings to make sure you hear what's going on because everything we're not going to always agree in. But thank God that we're in a dem uh, democratic system where when it comes down to election, you vote for what you want or you vote against what you want. So. Please come out and truly be informed. Next week at Richland Elementary at 6 o'clock, I'll be back there again uh, at 6 p.m. And I'm going to have the whole team there once again. We're going to do some things just a little bit different. Going to be video and everything there so people can understand what we're doing. And it may be some people that still is not going to agree with everything, but some people that may agree with it. And not only just agreeing or disagreeing, we really want to hear from you. See, when you have an opportunity to speak and say what you're concerned about, but you never come up with that, but then when something is brought forward, you want to be the first one to be against it, that's the issue. So I, I, I'm looking for more solutions and being a part of the solution and not being a part of the problem or not using this, this as a political stance. And, and I'm, I'm speaking out to a, the Weeds group. They need to start to bring their ideas of how we can work together to try to work through some of this and come up with some ideas because, believe it or not, they are our constituents too. So I listen to everyone, whether I agree with you or don't. They said our constituents, so we want to work with everyone, and you know, to make these things happen and not just be a fact that you just going against it because it's the mayor. Because actually, it's going to be the city and the citizens that's going to be the ones to make this decision. It's best to be a part of it than to be left on the outside and other things that's going on. So. I'm advising everyone to come out next Tuesday at Richland Elementary. Richland Elementary from 6 to 8 in the first hour. It may be us, you know, just talking about what we're doing, our plans, and different things like that. And then we lay, leave the other hour open for questions and concerns like we did at fall this past Tuesday. As a matter of fact, I don't think we were still speaking no more than about 30, 40 minutes. I think the other hour and 20 minutes for people asking. And I have no problem with people asking questions because they need to know what's going on. It's their tax dollars, you know, and, and everyone is not going to agree with me. But I do want them to hear what I'm saying as well. I want to hear what they're saying because we may be able to make some things work well. We can do some things different. So 
I'm, about, I'm asking everyone that's in the Weaver area, not the, I'm sorry, not the Weaver, the Richland area, to come out and be a part where they can hear what's going on and we can move forward uh, like that. And they will we'll be truly informed. Also, during the time we did start our West Memphis United campaign, and you will see this week another press conference from the pastors and the uh, parks department, because uh, it is very important of the, the the responsibility that I feel that they have. Our police department have taken the stand, and if you look at some of the numbers that they gave, uh, Chief, do you have them numbers? Well, Chief, you just come to the mic. Just get some of the numbers, which is Operation Purge. And you are here exactly what they have been doing, so they can stop saying, "Well, they don't hit up for the police part." And since uh, since we first started the the operation, uh, just on firearms alone, uh, we've confiscated. Let's see, two three eighty caliber handguns, twenty five nine millimeter handguns. Six forty-five caliber handguns, four forty caliber handguns, two twenty-two caliber handguns, two twenty-five automatic handguns, four ten millimeter handguns, five seven point six two rifles, and two two twenty-three carbine pistols. Also, during that, we confiscated uh, a couple of firearms that had Glock switches on them. I brought that uh, up to the police commission meeting the other day. That's what we're up against. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, it takes my gun, makes it fully automatic. So when I pull the trigger, it empties whatever's in my gun. It, it, it empties it out. Um, let's see, we got, we also came up with a shining star for the week. So if we arrest you and you want the high profile criminals on our streets, we're gonna post you on Facebook. We're gonna tell everybody about you. So it do, doesn't only show your bosses and everybody else who you really are, but shows the citizens who you are and who to be out uh, to watch out for. Uh, statistics, let's see if I've got that. During, during this Operation Purge, we made 100 misdemeanor arrests, which is nonviolent felonies and, and non-felonies. Non we made 27 narcotic seizures uh, we've made 125 citation, which citation is arrest, but we release you on citation, like traffic stops. Uh, 45 felony arrests, and like I say, 45 uh, gun seizures. Mm -hmm. So we're out here, they know we're there, and even on Facebook, if you look at that, a lot of the citizens in here and in Memphis are, are talking. They know we're coming, and, and we're not gonna stop. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a few of them, yes. So that's why it's so important that we want the citizens to come out because we may hear about it and we just definitely want the citizens to come out and get this information. And I do apologize for the chief, but he did say this, you know, he is, he is not a politician. He is a, a police officer. So I guess sometimes when he talk, he, he can't get elaborate like us up here can say the right things and I don't want anything that he said that, uh, that can sway the wrong way, but these guys are here to, to fight and protect us, so we just wanted to make sure that everyone know that. So our police department is very active. I see the major back there as well. They, they are very active in fighting crime. We just want to make sure that the people know. And, you know, I understand there may be some criticism because there's always room for improvement, but it's best to be supporting them and make sure that they do everything they need to do, then always complaining and complaining and complaining without any solution. Um, so that means was very good, they were very informative. The people left out there, they said they were very informed and sometimes it may be the same people, but we ask for more people can come out and get that information so that they can be, uh, Ms. Fritz was there as well. I want, I, I, I want them to, to, to start being evangelists for us to say what we're doing and what we can do to get, be, be better. So. I thank you for your presence there and any other person outside of the council members and elected officials, police, fire, who was there. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, Director Rose as well. So and we just want to make sure make sure everyone is informed and know what we're doing and, and we want to work on being better because we want to be better for the city that we all love. Also, Tuesday started a great day for me once again, our summer jobs program with our young people. 
they started to be interviewed with some great, intelligent young men and women um, all over the city. We're looking forward. They, they are working currently. I was at the utilities department now, and I've seen probably about six of them. I think partnered with the fire department, they are getting ready to do some uh, some repainting on the, on the fire hydrants and different things like that. Uh, we got some that's walking through our offices right now. They are very intelligent, doing some great things, and they're just good. Airport, they they all over the city, you know, A and P. So it's just so good to see them out and being involved and being active and and learning so much stuff and seeing what we have as a city to offer. Because you know, when I asked them one question, and they mean, uh, how many of your kids that are not here that's coming back? And you know, some of them said, well, they're not coming back. Why not? Because of the lack of what they learned, uh, oh, there's nothing to do here in the city. And I want them to start to, to be active and, and love what I say because we can't bring back our homegrown stock people. That's a problem. So, lastly, we asking them to come over their ideas because we are looking at things to present and we still looking. But I just want to hear from the people as well so we can uh, try to make some things better. All right, that's the summer jobs program. Also, June, Saturday, June 15th would be the celebration of the Juneteenth Festival here at the City of West Memphis, and it will be held at the High Tower Park. So I talked with the director today, Director Jones. He said it's still going to be at the High Tower Park. So we asked asking everyone to come out to um, enjoy themselves and celebrate in that holiday on festivals on uh, June 15th for the Juneteenth Festival. Did anyone else have any? announcement to make. Also, the Municipal League is the 13th through the 14th of next week. So uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th. 13th, 14th, and 15th of next week. That's uh, Wednesday, through Wednesday through Friday. So that is the Municipal League. Yeah, 13th, 12th. Okay, 12th, 13th, 14th. That's uh, Wednesday through Friday, the Municipal League. So uh, Everyone that is planning on going, I'm sure you probably have a guy with Kenneth and he have already got that information to you. And if you're not going, uh, Ms. Patricia, just inform me. Please let us know as soon as possible about the municipal league. Um, were there other, any other information or concerns or announcement that anyone wants to bring forward? Remembrance of D-Day is today, June okay. the 6th. Yes, that's right. I seen President Biden uh, over this morning. So, yes, today is D Day. Uh, you want to kind of explain on that, Councilman McCormick? D Day? D Day? Yeah. Well, D Day was the beginning of the end of the, uh, the uh, Nazi Party um, and, and uh, the dictator Adolf Hitler, and it ended the war not much longer after that. But uh, there were a lot of young men that stormed the beaches over there that were 16, 17, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And they had something like 6,000 casualties storming the beaches. So we lost a lot of young men that day. And uh, there's a lot of people that are still alive today that actually, that actually was on the beach. I had a, uh, a cousin that I posted on Facebook. He was with the uh, army and he was 19 or 18 years old when he stormed those beaches. And uh, he just passed away last week. Uh, but to hear him talk about it was just chilling. So just remember, that's the greatest generation. And uh, they should be still be remembered and honored. Amen. Well, definitely, we thank all of them who made that ultimate sacrifice. And thank, thank your cousin and well, the many other for their service to our country. Uh, my last thing I'm saying is, um, I think this count. I think I want to thank every member of this city council, even though we may not always agree. But I want to thank you for your input, your input because I believe that you have passion and you have love for this city. And I think right now we're in the opportunity to do some amazing things for the city of West Memphis. Thank you. Uh, uh, can I say something for sure, you? Sure, go ahead, Miss Hill. Okay, going back to public works, we having a bad problem with the people's putting the trash out on empty lots over there on Polk Street. But I had to ask the lady to take a picture of the one doing it mm -hmm. and the address she and send it that. to us and we'll do something. We'll send cold enforcement out there. We just can't send them out there to anyone's house right. because we don't know who's doing it. 
Well, you're exactly right. I just really wish the people, some people in West Memphis, would take more pride in their community. I know I was coming from Paul Plaza, the Riverside, and they put the garbage cans on, not the garbage can, they trash bag on the top of their car. They pass right by the garbage can mm -hmm. and go on to the service road and drops it all on the service road. Mm -hmm. It's just talking about pride in your community, you know. Mm -hmm. And just wishing that more people would just do that. So, yeah. And we could take pictures of those people that's doing that mm -hmm. and like put them on Facebook with their car when they're doing it. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything else. See the attorney? <laughs> second. Second. Yeah. Did you call for the journal? No. no. Yeah, someone, can I get a motion? Second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Councilman Monday, did you have something? Yes. Councilman Murray, Jim Jackson, I'd like to speak with y'all after the, after the meeting, please. All right, we got a motion by Councilman Croom. Can I get a second? The, second. This is adjourned. Second. Dr. Brew. All in favor, bye. Opposed? Let's get out of here. Thanks.